the final day of competition in the National Hot Rod Association National Drag Racing Championships. Raceway Park. If you want to be part of the action, you want to go early. If you are part of the action, you have to go early. And the man driving this truck is very much part of the action. His name is Don Prudhomme, the national dragster. Considered him a prime favorite to win the Nationals in double-A fuel competition for a second successive time. A young man, but still a veteran. He's been in the sport a long time. He's learned his trade the hard way. He's a favorite. I think at this time of morning, you wouldn't be running on the road, right? <laughs> I couldn't even believe it when I got up when he called the tick. Yeah. Another morning, right? We got two more to go when we go home, right? Is that the plan? That's the plan. Of course, the main thing is that clutch, but we get that clutch and tire combination together, we got it made. We go up to the line in the last round and try it like that, and that baby smokes some tires to your history, right? right? We're pretty good guys, but you know, when you get to a meet like this, you don't really, you don't really have any friends, you know? You can't. Yeah. Do you believe there's traffic? Do you have any uh, real plans on how you're going to run the meet? Full bore all the way. You have to. You try and back off and save it for the last round, okay. somebody will get you. They'll grenade it against you or something, you know. Just plan on. And after five runs, the engine will be junk. But the last run, it'll, it'll still be there. As you could tell by Don Prudhomme's comments and reflections earlier this morning when these pictures were taken, there would be little time for quietness at the track. When he arrived, these young fans were waiting. And Don Prudhomme always takes time to visit with those who back him from the stands, and particularly the young people. He recognizes his sport for what it is. It is more than just acceleration down a quarter mile strip a test of speed. It's also a test of men. Okay. On this day, from here on, there will be very little time for personal reflection. Huh? Don Perdomb has won it twice now, and should he win, he will join Gullitz as a three-time national champion. The National Hot Rod Association Nationals offering more than $300,000 in total posted prize money. The crowd From came early. thousand-plus entries to this national championship, and we're down now to just about a couple of hundred, and everything's riding on the action today. The transformation of the man into a fantasy-like figure as he pulls on the fireproof clothing, the mask, the helmet, wedging the body into the steel cage to protect himself should there be trouble somewhere down that quarter-mile strip. The nickname Snake that Don Prudhomme wears is not the prettiest around, but it symbolizes his attitude once he sits at the starting line for a drag race. Toughness, quickness. And as they are pushed for that giddy little ride into the staging area, each man withdraws unto himself, knowing full well he's got to run his own race, that you really can't afford to race the other man. moment you leave that starting line until you flash over the finish line, it's often less than seven seconds. It'll be Prudhomme against Danny Angaius, a pair of Californians. They burn their tires in the staging area to heat them up, make them as sticky as possible to get every bit of the traction they can using a special solution for when they release the 1,500 horsepower engines onto those tires. They want them to stick, to grab, to drive, and send them winging down the quarter-mile straight. Lynn Prudhomme, part of the crew, as she watches her husband, Don, move up to the starting line. Prudhomme in the near lane, Danny Angaius in the far lane, and they are ready.
incredible blast of power as Don Prudhomme defeats Danny Ungaius, the kind of action that is marking the 16th annual National, National Hot Rod Association staging one of the most explosive, one of the most record-setting events in the history of drag racing. I'm Keith Jackson, and today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, I think that you'll just stand in awe at some of the mechanical and personal performances by some of the top drag racing drivers in the world. And something new at the National Drags at Raceway Park, motorcycles for the first time, running in a special category, $1,500 prize money. In the competition we're about to see, James Chrysler, Minneapolis, Minnesota, on a Harley Davidson, and from Great Britain, Dennis Norman. Their speeds will be more than 135 to 140 miles an hour. In the far lane, James Chrysler gets off the line with a great hole shot, pulls away to win by a wide margin over Dennis Norman of Great Britain. And Chrysler broke 10 seconds, 9.7 seconds, better than 137 miles an hour on motorcycles, mind you, over the quarter-mile drag strip. The NHRA Nationals will continue in just a moment as we'll have a look at the Funny Car quarterfinals. These are the funny cars. In effect, they are short versions, double-A fuel dragsters, and plastic bodies, and Don Prudhomme is everywhere today. He owns this car. It'll be driven by Jay Howell, and here Don turns crew member. As he pours the solution down for Howell to burn his tires, heat them up, and move into the starting line area. The funny car is capable of going over 200 miles an hour. It's very light. The bodies are made of plastic. Don Shoemaker has been one of the hot fellows all across the country, match racing and in the national competition as well throughout this year. Shoemaker's car is a Barracuda, and so is the car that Howell will be driving, a Barracuda. And Shoemaker has been very, very steady in all of the competition leading up to the funny car quarterfinal. Buster Couch is the starter. Watch him explode off that starting line. I mean, they leap out of there. Shoemaker at the top end pulls away to a comfortable win. 7.07 seconds. Elapsed time better than 210 miles an hour for the winner, Shoemaker. So Don Prudhomme, himself a winner just moments ago, watches his Barracuda lose in the Funny Car quarterfinal. In case you wonder why these are called Funny Cars, the reason for that is very simple. A few years ago, when they first came on the scene as an experimental class, the public address announcers called them a funny car. The name stuck. No one's come up with a better one yet. Now we see Bruce Larson and Bobby Wood. That's Bobby Wood, covered up by the smoke as he heats up his tires in a Chevy 2, a red one, really steaming things up. That Chevy 2 has crushed the power, incidentally. He'll be running in the near lane, and Bruce Larson in the... Camaro will be in the far lane. They're ready to go. And it's Larson in the far lane, the winner. 7.16 seconds, 206 miles an hour. Bobby Wood, 7.22 seconds elapsed time. A close loser. Bruce Larson goes the semifinals in the funny cars. Right now, we're going to have a look at the pro stockers. Now, visually, these may look very much like the cars you've just seen. But they are quite different. For one thing, the pro stocker is required to keep the steel shell that came when the car rolled out of the factory. It must not be changed. The steel shell must remain, and there is a minimum weight of 2,700 pounds. They are allowed to make certain lightweight modifications, but they must stay above that weight minimum. They are hot, but not as hot as the funny car. Herb McCandless, right here in the near lane of the Sox and Martin entry, gets Bob Yowell. Ken 
Sinless in the Duster defeats Bob Yowell in the Plymouth in the far lane, and the time for McCandless, 10.02 seconds. For Yowell, 10.14 seconds. Again, very close. This is how close. McCandless won it right at the finish line. Meantime, back in the fits, let's spend a moment with Don Prudhomme and his wife, Lynn. I hope so. Huh? I hope so. Two years in a row. Yeah. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, Dave. We'll have to see. Pardon? I say we'll have to see. We just heard a piston over a little while. Well, we're changing it right now. Should we walk in? Well, I got, I got my boys doing it. <laughs> Top guess. The only difference, the fundamental difference between this machine and the AA fuel tractor that we saw a few minutes ago, this one runs on pumped gasoline. The fuel dragster runs on a mixture of nitromethane and alcohol. A big twin Chrysler. Powerhouse moving to the staging area. Ray Motes is the driver. Jerry Glenn in the single engine machine. And a handful of twin engine gas dragsters running here this week at the Nationals, and all of them have performed very well. They give away weight, quickness, to get more power. Looks like Mertz may have blown an engine. I think you may have won the race, too, and Mertz is out of control. How about that for a piece of driving? He doesn't have much room in which to maneuver. Obviously, he's cooked an engine, but a great piece of work by Ray Moats to keep his dragster under control, and he brings it safely to a stop at the end of the quarter-mile run. Well, I guess if you're going to let it all hang out, this is the place, and that's how close the finish was. 7.25 seconds for Moats, the winner. Glenn, 7.27 seconds. He was the loser. So Moats is still in it, despite the fact he has blown an engine. You're watching the NHRA Nationals on ABC's Wide World of Sports from Raceway Park, Indianapolis, Indiana. This is Keith Jackson, and we continue our coverage of the Top Gas quarterfinals. Running in the near lane will be Roger Rowe. In the far lane, Chevy-powered, Richie Shot, Top Gas quarterfinals. Both men have been very quick so far in their competition. Shot running with Chevy power, hoping to get a little more reliability than he has had in the past, perhaps giving away a little horsepower to get that reliability. But that does not necessarily follow because the traction is so tremendous here at Raceway Park. At the middle of the strip, and Roger Rowe runs away to win in an elapsed time of 7.42 seconds. 7.42, and he got some kind of a start. He was so far out in front, halfway down the strip, I think that Richie Schott realized there was no way he was going to catch him. And I think it's worth taking another look at what the drag racers call a hole shot. That's when the man gets off so quick like that, he's gone almost impossible to catch him. All right, now we go into the top fuel quarterfinals. And here comes Big Daddy, Don Garland. He's won this event three times. He's won five national championships. He'll be running against Bob Ivett. Don Garland, I'm sure most of you know, sustained a severe injury to a foot, lost part of it, in an accident in California. Here he is, one of the great innovators one of drag racing top figures, Don Garland, back in the middle of it. If you want to see a pro start, watch this one. A great start by Garland. He beat his man off the line. Cuts down halfway through. Wins easy. 7.07 seconds for Garlitz in beating Bob Ivett. Garlitz will go to the semifinals, beating the winner of the Jim Nickel Marshall Love match, which is upcoming. 
He has won this event three times, 67, 68, back to back, and that's the feat that Don Prudhomme would like to duplicate. And meantime, in the pits, the tension is really growing where Don Prudhomme is at work. Quarterfinals, Don Prudhomme, the same thing over and over. On goes the safety equipment. The routine remains pretty much the same. How about the car? Has it been routine with it? Well, everything's going pretty good so far. We just uh, ran a uh, 643. There's a low ET, and as long as the engine can stand up, we can win the meet. I don't know, though. It's gonna have to, we're going to have to run awfully hard, though. Competition requires hard running here this year, doesn't it? Oh, it gets tougher and tougher every year. I'll tell you, it's just really hard to stay on top. Getting so much out of an engine, demanding so much, diminishes the reliability factor, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The, the engine's fresh. When it comes into the race, it's good for about five runs, and it's dead. As he turns to continue the work with his crew, readying himself for the upcoming semifinals, again, I'll say the, the tension is reflected visibly. You can never be too ready when you're going to go streaking down a quarter-mile stretch of concrete at 225 or 30 miles an hour in less than seven seconds. There's the white Lynn, right by his side. The crowds have sometimes have grown so thick around the working area that they've had to ask marshals to move them away. Back on the staging area, a key match between Marshall Love of Arlington, Texas and Jim Nickel of Spring Valley, California. A couple of tested veterans who have been so close to tasting the glory of a national championship. And it's a big moment for both men. Jim Nickel will be in the near lane. Marshall Love in the far lane. Both have been under seven seconds in their last four runs. Jim Nickel at the top end, 6.59 seconds, and both men release their chutes late, way down the strip, and look at them bounce around. And they use all of the runout area. Nickel, 6.59 seconds, 227 plus miles an hour. Marshall Love in losing at a 6.62, 227.2 seconds. Wow, what a tough way to lose. We mentioned earlier, they look like figures out of some fantasy, but every piece of equipment they wear is needed and necessary, and particularly the mask when those fumes come blasting back into their face. We'll see Don Prudhomme and Pete Robinson right after this timeout. The temperature has now risen to better than 90 degrees. A sultry, hot, sticky day. Sneaky Pete Robinson, Atlanta, Georgia, has heated his tires, and he moves up onto the starting line. This is a crafty, tough veteran. Burning his tires, and what now they expand as they come out of the boot box. Don Prudhomme comes into the near lane. One time they used a plain bleach. Now they've gone to some very sophisticated substances to increase the traction. The way the rubber is burned into this track here at Raceway Park in Indianapolis, they don't need a whole lot of help for traction. This is a big match in the top fuel quarterfinals. Robinson and Proudhon. Just after the start, eased off, Prudhomme wins it. Listen to the lap time, 6.45 seconds for Don Prudhomme, 208 miles an hour. Pete Robinson, 6.64 seconds elapsed time. His speed, about 207 miles an hour. So Don Prudhomme stays in it. And we'll be back for more later at Indianapolis. But right now, let's rejoin Jim McKay at Val d'Isere, France. Men's downhill skiing.
Thanks very much, Jim, and I wish we had some of that snow and cool air here at Indianapolis Raceway Park as we continue our coverage of the National Hot Rod Association National. You're looking into the pits of Don Prudhon. He is just moments away from his semifinal race against Brian Budd. They are putting the car back together, afraid to gamble that everything might not be just right. His wife, Lynn, everybody who is part of this group, who could help, who can help, has been pushed into service on a stifling hot afternoon. We're going to try one more run with these A cool, wet towel is mighty welcome. Don't even. They'll button the car up as fast as possible now, having made some changes in the engine. And just moments from now, Prudhomme will be wheeled onto the staging area for his semifinal match. Meantime, there is action at the staging lane. Jim Nichols moving into the near lane from Spring Valley, California. He's going against Don Garlitz of Cessna, Florida. Garlitz almost a living legend as far as the NHRA Nationals are concerned. A three-time winner, Jim Nichols. He's never won a big one, but he's been close, and he's had a good season. And it's strictly shootout time right now with Big Daddy. The winner here goes to the top fuel final. Garlitz in the far lane, Nichols in the near lane. The big crowd all standing. And the red light is shining in Don Garlitz's lane. You won't see that very often, but Don Garlitz has thrown a red light. He left too soon. Perhaps it was the bite of the track, the incredible traction you get here at Raceway Park. Whatever, Don Garlitz has been eliminated by a foul. And thus ends his comeback to racing after his severe accident. But he made it to the semifinals, and he is still tough. Jim Nichol is the winner. and We'll have more in a moment. Here we go with the last of the semifinal runs in the top fuel category. Jim Nickel has already won his way into the finals. The winner of this one between Don Prudhomme moving up to burn his tires against Brian Budd who moves into the near lane. Brian Budd was the low qualifier, rolled off the truck a couple of days ago and turned in a 6.66 second elapsed time and better than 212 miles an hour and nobody could beat him in the qualifying. He has made his way to the semifinals. You would think at this juncture, however, Don Prudhomme might enjoy a psychological edge because Bud has not had the experience of Prudhomme nor the winning history. Very ticklish up on that starting line, and both men know it. Literally laden with fatigue, they have struggled, forced their way to this moment. And just a few seconds from now, it's going to be all over for one of them. Prudhomme in the far lane, Bud in the near lane. Red light on Brian Bud. Don Prudhomme is in the finals against Jim Nichol. Bud realizing he had to get off quick, let it go too quick. He saw the red light himself and shut his equipment off and coasts on through the trap. And Don Prudhomme will be going against Jim Nichol for the top fuel championship here at the Nationals. The Pro Stockers now will come wheeling around the corner. Harlan Banky of Akron, Ohio in a Plymouth Duster running against Herb McCandless of Burlington, North Carolina. He is in the Stockton Martin Duster right here. Both these men have been absolutely superb so far. Their starts have been impeccable. Their equipment is at a peak. This could be one of the quickest post-stock races you have ever seen. Arlen Banky won here in 1968 at the Nationals, winning the Super Stock Championship. But this post-stock category is a little hotter. Red, white, and blue is McCandless. Banky's on the far side. Postdoc title on the line right now. They're shifting all the way through, and it is close. And it's McCandless, the winner. 
9.981 seconds. And hear this, Banky, 9.983 seconds, and both men get 138.03 miles an hour for their top speed. And let's take another look. The top speed is measured in the last 66 feet at the very end of the course, and you can see the candlers won it by the smallest of margins. You never been so happy in your life, Herb. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That's the first big one for you, huh? Yes, sir, in the pro stock, I'm really happy. I just don't know what to say. And Ronnie Stocks would be sitting down under that tree kind of green. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie's, he had some transmission trouble. It's just one of those things. It's, I'd really be lucky and fast a lot of times. You really had to put the pressure on equipment this year, though, didn't you? Yes, we really did. We really pushed the cars hard. This was the toughest field of cars I've ever seen. Herb, you did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. The young man from Burlington, North Carolina, Herb McCandless, wins his first major title at 27 years of age in the Sucks and Martin Duster. And now we move into now the final run for the motorcycles, running for the first time at the NHRA Nationals. It'll be Boris Murray of Laverne, California, on a triumph in the far lane, running against Larry Welk of Chevrolet, Maryland. He is on a triumph in the near lane. Murray has the quicker time so far in the competition of the two at 9.49 seconds. Welsh at 9.51. They'll put it out here right now. In the finals, Buster Couch taking a good look. This is something new for everybody who's been coming to the NHRA Nationals for years here at Indianapolis. Burning the tires halfway through the quarter mile, and it is Welch at the top end. Listen to this. 9.34 seconds for Larry Welch, 161 plus miles an hour. Morris Murray at 9.14, but Welch beating with a hole shot. We'll be back to talk with the top fuel finalist Jim Nickel and Don Prudhomme in a moment. 9.49. Jim, you put it together yourself. You've yes. come to the end of a long, hard week. What are you thinking right about now? Well, I feel fortunate to get this far. It's been a heck of a good race all the way. Everybody's run good. It's been a terrific race. One of the best races I've ever been to, I guess. It's actually been an incredible meet, hasn't it? <clears throat> Certainly has. What do you think it'll take to win? Oh, that, I wouldn't even want to say. Good luck, huh? Yeah, <laughs> take a lot of luck, that's for sure. Uh, uh, most fellas say, I drive my own race. I'm running the clock, and then we'll see what happens to the other guy. Is that pretty much the way you go at it? Uh, that's basically the way you have to feel about it. You know, Perdome's a uh, very good runner and a heck of a good driver, so we'll just have to see what happens. That's all. It takes a little of what you call gut toughness when you come up in this moment, doesn't it? That and a little lady luck, yeah. <laughs> Jim, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Jim Nichol from Spring Valley, California, is certainly not an unknown factor. Prior to this meet, the national dragster in handicapping the field made particular note that he had been a consistent performer and been so close to winning one of the big ones. It also made note of the fact that he has been running some real hot stuff in his equipment, but he did come in as one of the listed favorites. Jim Nichol, to be reckoned with by Don Prudhomme. Don, you happy as you go to the finals? Oh, boy, very happy. I want to do it two times in a row. That make me a five-time national champion, and I'll tie it with Gartlett. Good luck to you. Thank you. Keep rolling, keep rolling. So the top fuel finalists are headed for the staging lane. We're not far away from the exciting climax to one of the most successful national meets ever for the NHRA here at Indianapolis. But right now, we're going to watch the top gas finals. Jack Jones of San Diego, California, will be in the far lane. Roger Rowe of Los Angeles will be in the near lane. Jack Jones is also trying for a second successive title here at the National. He won the top guest title last year. Victory here today could be worth right at $10,000 for the winner. Jones, both veterans, both cool, both very quick off the line. This race will probably be won, either on the start or somewhere in the middle. 
Neither man has had to really extend his equipment to win at the top end so far. Jones on the far side. And Roger Rowe on the near side. And the Christmas tree is lit. And it's Jack Jones with a great start. 7.41 seconds for the quarter mile run for Jack Jones. The speed not a particular factor in this instance because Jones got such a great start that he was well out in front halfway down and zipped across to win his second successive top gas title here at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the Nationals. So there is jubilation in the San Diegans' pits, and here comes the crew racing down pit road. There was a time when you could win this championship and go home with $1,000, but not anymore. Today, there is 10 times that amount guaranteed. And here's the crew. Now we go to the bomb. The white car is Leroy Goldstein. He was the first man to run a funny under seven seconds. And here at Raceway Park in this meet, he has had four runs in less than seven seconds in his funny car. Don Shoemaker in this blue and white machine has been so consistent, it's remarkable. And the question is, the raw power in the Ram Chargers machine with Leroy Goldstein be enough? Or will the consistency of Shoemaker pay off? This event worth about 11,000 bucks for the winner. Remember the funny cars run on fuel, nitromethane and alcohol. Same kind of stuff the top fuelers fly on. Here they go. Leroy Goldstein lost traction. You saw that big puff of smoke. His tires were spinning, and it was that fraction of a second that let Shoemaker get out in front and win it. Shoemaker's having trouble with his chute. Got tangled up, but he holds it under control. And he pulls off the track. He's got a fire. There's a fire inside. Dodge Shoemaker's car. The body is plastic. Shoemaker's outfit in a hurry. Up goes the hood. The extinguisher's on, and here comes help for it. Don Shoemaker has won the Funny Car Championship. He has an extinguisher inside, and obviously when he first saw the fire, he popped it. They were quick there to help him. Excuse me? Kind of hot? Very. <laughs> what let go? Well, we burned a couple of pistons, I'm sure, on the run. We blew some oil out of the breathers. Catches on fire on the headers, and then I hit the fire extinguishers. Didn't hurt the climax, though. Victor's still sweet, isn't it? That's for sure. <laughs> Incredible performance by the funny cars. There must have been moments when you wondered if you weren't kind of wandering around on the ragged edge during the whole meet. We've been on a ragged edge the whole meet, I'm sure, all of us. Well, you hung on, did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Seven seconds flat, 215 miles an hour for Don Shoemaker. The top fuel final, Prudhomme and Nichols, coming up. They come around the turn, and the first one to the bleach box is Don the Snake Prudhomme. This is it. This is the climax to all of the hard work, the frustration, the sleepless nights. The climactic moment. For the NHRA Nationals, Don Prudhomme, the snake from Granada Hills, California. Jim Nichol, experienced veteran from Spring Valley, California. The day started near 4 a.m. for both these men on this day. Steaming hot weather has given them both fatigue, bone tiredness. high right now as they can possibly be for a golden moment in drag racing. The highest payoff ever for the top fuel dragster. The biggest crowd in the history of the Nationals watching. 
the near lane, John Prudhomme, the far lane, Jim Nichols, they are both staged. down to the run-out area. Let's go down. braking heavily, his parachute behind him. But Nichols' car, cut in half, there is the driver's cage. It caromed at least 350 feet down the track and bounced over into the grass. Don Prudhomme climbing out of his car. He appears to be all right. It was Jim Nichols' car that came apart. Again, I would say that Don Prudhomme appeared to be all right. He is now climbing out of his fire suit. concerned with the fact that he won his second successive championship. Okay, That's the front end of Jim Nichols' car that came all the way to the end of the run-out area. And we understand that Jim Nichol was conscious when taken out of the roll cage and put in the ambulance, now on the way to the hospital. We'll be back to check on his condition and talk with Don Prudhomme in just a moment. The crowd has gathered around what's left of Jim Nichols' car, disintegrated in the final run for the Top Fuel Championship. The word from the hospital is that Jim Nichols will be at the victory banquet tonight. He'll be a little sore, but he's all right. That's marvelous news, incredible news, considering the extent of the accident. And here's the finish, how terribly close it was. Perdome winning by a yard. Three one hundredths of a second at 231 miles an hour. It won't matter. You look all right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know you, like uh, thousands of us, were shaken by what happened to uh, Jim Nichols. Yeah, it was just unbelievable, I'll tell you. We were coming towards the lights, and he was right next to me. I didn't know who was going to win the race. And then I, I knew I was in the finish lights, and I was getting a little dust back on me, a little oil back on me. And I opened the chute. And I got my goggles down a little bit where I could see, and the next thing I know, his car was in front of mine. If my shoe hadn't opened, I'd have hit him for sure. I hit what was remaining of his car. Well, I know when you got out of the car, you said, I'm going I'm to quit. Uh, that's a tough thing for a five-time national champion to say. Yeah, well, that's the way I feel right now. I'll tell you, things are uh, getting too tough, and I just don't know what's going to happen. But I'd, I'd sure like to thank all my sponsors that, that have brought us this far to win all these meets. And once Hot Wheels, Goodyear, yeah. Coca-Cola, you know. Don, I've never seen you so fatigued as you were before you started this final. Yeah, it's been a long tour. We just ended up, uh, this is our last date, and we're on our way home, and we've had two cars, a funny car, a Hot Wheel car we've been running, and it's just really been a strain on us, really. 
You've got to be one of the toughest critters I've ever seen. Well, thank you very much. I'm just very happy uh, tying Garland's mark now. Now that I won five national events, and that makes me just super happy. 6.45, Don's a great final run. You're a fine sportsman. Go get some rest. Thank you very much. And thus, the NHRA Nationals come to a close at Raceway Park. An incredible chapter in the growth of this sport. Incredible that Jim Nichols should survive the accident we saw and be making plans right now to attend the victory banquet. Record speed, record money, record crowd at the NHRA Nationals. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Coordinating producer, Jim Spence. National Drag Racing, produced by Bryce Weissman. Directed by Bernie Hoffman. World Cup Skiing, produced by Doug Wilson. Directed by Robert Rieger. Remember, coming up next here on ABC, except for those of you on the West Coast, the East-West College All-Star Football Game. And next Saturday, here on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the 25th Annual Fula Bowl Football Classic, live and in color, via satellite from Honolulu, beginning at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now this is Keith Jackson saying so long from Indianapolis, Indiana. Today's program pre-recorded.